Hey viewers, welcome to episode 3 of my course on MATLAB programming. Today we're doing debugging and debugging is one of the main things that you need to learn if you want to, uh, well, learn a new uh, programming language because, well, getting the syntaxes is pretty easy. That is what you need to type. Thinking up how your program is structured, things like that, you can learn that anywhere, but every a language has their own way of debugging and um, yeah there are several tools here in um, in MATLAB we're going to go over them one by one and I'm sure that well everyone has their own preferred way to dealing with it just going to describe them and I'm going to say in which cases they are well the most useful tool to to use I have four examples as you can see we're going to run them one by one uh, first of all example one no error but if we go into the example you can see here it has function before that's how you can run it from an external file um, basically it says a is one then b is a so b becomes one and then b is two but i'm overwriting the value of b here so basically the program immediately says well there's a squiggly line under it and it says that uh, you can see it here you can also see it here the value assigned to the, to the variable b might be unused. It says that in the bottom line as well, but yeah, that's because the program ends without me using it. But this one is actually just right here. It's on the right side. It says here that it's orange because there are warnings found. So uh, if you make a mistake, so an actual mistake like this, now it says b is and then nothing, then it becomes an error and this turns red. Obviously, if I were to do uh, BSA and then uh, display B, now it will become green. And this is what you normally want. There are exceptions, of course, because it cannot see. So the program is not programmed to see every mistake that you can possibly make. Therefore, Sometimes it becomes uh, orange even though there's no error, but you're loading in a function, for example, from another file and it cannot see which variables are in there. Uh, that's an example, but it is possible. Anyway, that being said, on to example number two. Example number two, we're going to run that. As you can see, it immediately gives me, uh, well, an error. Then it says in which file, and it also says which line. If you click either this or this, with this one you go to the file, with this one you go to the line, and as you can see the cursor immediately shows up at display A, and that is because I have, well, a variable that I needed to put into the function, and I didn't. So it immediately says that, but imagine that that is not there. So it looks like this. and this is not here so it would just say display a and there is no a to display so how you would go about doing this this is a comment now by the way for those of you not aware how you would go about doing this is you place uh, in the left side you just click to add um, a stop a uh, breakpoint then if you run the function it would say display a and if you hover over a you can see what it says. We will see this later on when it's um, uh, when I will start explaining more about programs. But this is your main method of doing this. You basically set a, a breakpoint, then you hover over the variable to see what's happening. Why is there a mistake? Now, well, how we fix this, of course, is we say a is one, and then if we do it again it will say A is 1, so now I can actually display it. Then if I, um, if you watch over here, here you have cell evaluation, here you have all of the, uh, well, the things you can do basically while running. So it is the run and then it has uh, clear set breakpoints, uh, clear breakpoints, yeah, it is clear and set. This is clear breakpoints in all files. Step, we're going to use that because it will step to, through the program one line at a time. And then it comes to this, this is all fine. And then here it's going to give an error. So by doing step by step, I can actually see in which line it, it bugs because, well, it does display here line 11, of course. 
So if I now set the breakpoint here, and then I see AS2, AS2, A1, it doesn't say anything. So there must be something wrong. And that is because, of course, A1 doesn't exist. I need to make that either 1 or A. And then um, it will run. And then it will just display 4. So 1, 2, 4 are my outputs. Uh, of course, you can also uh, use these things. I, I like to use them, not so much the display, more the fprintf, as where did we end up? So we can uh, display whatever we like. So if, if I uh, want to display which line I'm on, then I can actually see which line has the error. So, oh, how far in the program it actually went. If I do it like this, then I will see line 5, line 9, line 13, but if there's an error here, then I can actually see it did perform all the way up to here, then it gives an error and it never gets to this. Obviously this is a very, very simple program so we can see straight off where we go wrong, but once you get into the more complex programs and the experienced programmers amongst you, they will know that this is a real problem. Debugging is really what you spend most of your time on uh, while developing a program. Anyhow, example number three. We're going to run it straight off. And, um, oh, it's already set, never mind. We're going to run it straight off. And um, what the program does is it displays a value when I do this. So it, it has a for loop in it. We will explain for loops and if loops and blah, blah in later episodes. Um, it counts from 100 to minus 100 with steps of minus 1 and I, div uh, I do A is 10 divided by the count. So it starts at 10 divided by 100 and it ends at 10 divided by minus 100. The thing is, at some point it divides by 0 and I want to know what's happening because dividing by 0 of course means nothing it can it, it's not a number so it should give an error and instead it didn't so we're going to enable the breakpoint this is not a red breakpoint so if you just click you get a breakpoint this is a conditional breakpoint which says here set modify condition and i want to have count is zero so i want to know what's happening when count is zero and um yeah that's, that's really all I do. So I just set count to zero. And then once we have that set, we can run through it. It will run the first 100 all on its own. And then here, if we check the, vari the variables, A is now uh, 10. And well, because it just divided by one and count to zero. So if I now uh, run with F10, oh, I'll, uh, I'll run it through here. So step, step in, we will discuss that later as well. Then we can see that A is infinite. So basically that's how it resolves dividing by zero here. But sometimes that is not good because dividing by zero, well, giving you infinite is not the answer that it should give. It should give not a number. And so I found an error in the program and basically, yeah, well, that's what it did. Then we can do one more. Uh, we can do if a is, uh, no, if count is zero, or oh, whatever, count is minus 50. Let's do that. Um, a is a. A doesn't exist here, so because I removed it. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to run through the program. It's going to give us an error, obviously. But because it's in a for loop, here you can see, um, undefined variable A, it immediately says what, uh, what it is. So normally in a bigger program, obviously it's not always obvious what it is. You can also have something running out of uh, range, for example, which is example four, in fact. So we're going to run example four. And as you can see, there's something going on. We will see that later but it will result in an error. There you go. So um, it exceeds matrix dimensions. That's what it says. But 
just like in the previous example, it is in a for loop. So there are a hundred iterations and I don't want to step through them because I can actually set a breakpoint, run, so that's F5, and then go with F10 through the entire thing. But you can imagine that takes a long time. So I'm not, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want it to stop when it gives the error. And you will see it ends at 100. That's also when it gives the error. And it says exceeds matrix dimension, but it doesn't say anything else. There are no variables in my workspace. I cannot see any of the variable numbers. So how do I fix that? Well, actually, there's a tool here, debug. And you can, you know, you can uh, do all the things that I just explained. So it's basically the breakpoints, the conditional breakpoints. But this we haven't seen yet. It is a stop if errors warning for all file. You just set this from never stop to always stop. You hit OK. You run the file. And now we will see that it will give the same error but it will actually stop the program. So it will stop the execution and tell me with the green arrow here where the error occurs. So currently exceeds matrix dimensions. So I do have um, a statement here which just says random number percent %i, which is integer, that's the first one, uh, is uh, %6.4f, which means um, a float with six uh, numbers at the max four behind the dot so um, yeah that's why it keeps spamming those numbers and that number comes from c count c is uh, 33 by 3 count is 100 which would run a range but we cannot see straight from this which number or how many there are here so if we pick pick up this and hit F9 or just hit the copy paste then it says that is the problem because as we will see uh, size no that's yeah well we can do size C and we will see that it is 33 by 3 obviously here we, we know that because we just made it but you can imagine in more complex programs you don't have that that luxury so you can now inspect all of the variables you can just see how big they are and where the problem occurs and because i have 100 in a 99 sized matrix i get an error so i can easily find it by just going around this line seeing all of the variables there are only two variables here that's count and c and one of the two runs out of range basically so it really narrows your search grid down to this but this debug tool of um, stop if errors warnings is very useful when you're debugging but it's not always the best tool as i said it's mostly used in for loops because then you want to um, you want to see where it actually well bugs, and for all of the other uh, examples that I've shown, there are just easier ways to to do this. The best way, of course, would be uh, the one I had here. So this was BS2. This is the most common way to uh, to address errors. It's just plain right there, unused variables. Uh, variables that you accidentally overwritten in this case uh, they are displayed immediately and that is very useful I think that is probably the one that I use the most because it immediately says what the problem is in the code and you will probably use this uh, well a lot as well but well just know four ways to debug the breakpoints, conditional breakpoints. Yeah, you use them every now and then. The conditional breakpoints, I rarely use those because I normally just use the debug stop if er errors warnings thingy because it's just so much easier. It will just stop at, well, where I want it to stop. But sometimes you have like a strange thing in your file, like I had over here, um, over here. Uh, yeah. one. This was uh, 10 divided by 10 divided by count, I believe. So it does something strange when count is zero because what it should result in is error. 
and it doesn't so I want to see what's going on and that's when you use the uh, conditional breakpoints the breakpoints itself yeah I use them all the time uh, with the step through so the F10 function here um, yeah and this one so the uh, debug uh, set er er uh, stop if errors warning I use that when I really can't find it on my own because it's in a for loop and this for loop only has a hundred iterations but obviously you have a lot more I mean if you do video productions you have for loops of uh, well 1080 times 1920 something like that so that would be yeah two two million so you would have to run to two million iterations if you wanted to do it by hand and obviously that's not good so anyway hope you learned something today and I will see you next time.